Today we're going to be talking about overcoming anxiety, worry, and fear. Let's do it. Hey, I'm Dave Ryder. I'm from BreakthroughMindsets.com and I'm a, a Breakthrough Mindset Specialist, a Neuro Programmer, a Transformational Coach, and a Mindsetter. So all three of these feelings, anxiety, worry, and fear, they create trance-like states in the mind that we can feel in the body and they can be really hard to break at first. There are also feelings associated with thoughts and beliefs underneath. We create anxiety from conditioned thoughts or conditioning certain thoughts over and over again. And these thoughts, when habituated, are wired in the brain, in the subconscious mind, and then we feel them automatically in the body and they feel real. Anxiety isn't something that attacks though. It's something that we do internally in the mind and then the body reacts to it. You know, it's like having an allergic reaction to some kind of food like dairy or wheat and the body reacts. Thoughts and beliefs in the mind are the same way. What we think and believe, the body expresses and experiences. When we think an allergic thought, we feel anxiety, fear, and worry in the body. And if we condition these thoughts, words, and pictures that we have in the mind, they can become automatic. They do become automatic. And then they can become a real challenge to change if we don't know how. So one of the things that I do with my clients is I, to help them to overcome anxiety is finding when and where that anxiety started in the brain. That's called an initial sensitizing event. It's the initial imprint. It's what we call traumatic stressful events or TSEs, the, the, the imprints in the subconscious mind. I ask questions to find the actual events that are linked and associated with these thoughts and beliefs in the brain so that we, we can change them. And changing what you've learned about yourself that's not true or the beliefs that were imprinted in the mind that might have been true a long time ago but are no longer applicable. Um, these are, these are the, the thoughts and the feelings and the beliefs that seem true for you. They're the legs of the table, which I'll explain right now. If you picture anxiety as like a dining room table with, you know, with legs on the table, if you climb to the top of the table and try to collapse the table by jumping up and down, the table's not going to go. That's the hardest way to collapse the table or the anxiety. Now the legs are the, the weak point. They're the easiest to take out. And if you do, if you take out one leg at a time, the table will go off balance and you'll be able to collapse it. The table legs represent memories and experiences around the time the anxiety first started. When you take the legs out one at a time, the table will eventually fall. Just like a little, little child could push over the biggest sumo wrestler if you have them close their eyes and stand on one foot, right? And they become off balance. So let me give you an example of what I know. One of the legs of anxiety is your own reaction to your own thoughts and feelings. When you react to your own thoughts and feelings as if they're true, that creates a, a structure in the brain, a neural network that actually becomes a thing and it feels real. And this leg or this knee jerk reaction or reacting to your own thoughts and feelings as if they're true and real creates a structure of how you produce anxiety that you feel, if that makes sense. So if you believe your thoughts and feelings to be real, this affirms and validates them in the mind and strengthens those neural pathways. Remember that saying, practice makes what? That's right, perfect. Actually, that's not right because perfect doesn't really exist. Practice makes permanent. Repeat after me, practice makes permanent. Excellent. But in this case, you can change it at any time if you know what to look for and you know what to do. It's true, what you practice, affirm and validate makes permanent in the mind, but you only, you, you can change that in the mind. So it's not really permanent. Nothing's permanent. We worry about things that might happen in the future. Something in the future that might represent some kind of pain from the past. The purpose of worry is to keep yourself from re-experiencing that pain from the past in the near future. The structure of worry in the mind is based on past memories and experiences and also repetitive conditioning in the mind. Again, if you practice unproductive, bad mental habits, then you'll feel them in the body as they run automatically until you learn to change them in the mind. So worry, worry is a robber. It robs you of your present moment magic. The present moment is the only time that you have and that's where you're given your power. When you worry, you take your mind out of the present moment and into a trance state in the future. Some fantasy or, or horror movie in, in some cases that hasn't happened yet. 
You practice this over and over and it can become a self-fulfilling prophecy, but the truth is 99% of the time it never even happens. So not only do you just scare yourself, but you miss out on the present moment. And the only moment you're given, you spend it or, or waste it fantasizing about something that will most likely never happen. The present moment is where you have your power. It's the only time you can do something about the situation right now. You can't do something about it right now in the future. So if you give your power away to worry, you end up shooting yourself in the foot instead of doing something about the situation. So break that habit, that habitual pattern of worry is your default, favorite default go-to state of mind. And break that trance. The more you practice worry, the better you get. Practice makes what? That's right, permanent. Until you do what? That's right, change it in your mind. Now fear is what we call an ECM, or Emotionally Conditioned Memory. It, stand, it might stand for something like uh, false evidence appearing real, which, which means it's all in the mind, right? Sometimes fear is, is appropriate, but most of the time, again, it's just a bad habit of the way we torment ourselves in hopes that we don't experience pain from the past in the future that we're creating and experiencing right now when we're thinking and reacting to our own fearful thoughts. Fear puts our body in the state of fight, flight, or freeze. The mind's higher functions get turned off and we're, we're ready to run like hell or we just do nothing and avoid the situation and go eat a donut or something like that because, <laughs> because, we're, uh, because of the fact that we're not doing anything about the situation. So when I work with my clients, fear stands for face everything and rise. And when you, when, you have, when you have help to take a closer look at your fears, what you discover is that what scared you wasn't really what you thought at all. That's why your fears can seem so tricky because the solutions are frequently counterintuitive. Fear can cause us to not take action and then we end up paralyzing ourselves and we react to our own conditioned thoughts about a future based on pain in the past in hopes that we will prevent it while we're creating the feelings inside that we were hoping to avoid. So instead of experiencing fear once and for all and dissolving it, we torment ourselves over and over again until we learn how to tap into a new state of mind. So life can seem short. With excessive anxiety, worry, and fear, it can seem like a lifetime. And time doesn't fly when you're not having fun. So make your, th your thoughts count, right? And get some help if you need it. I was at the park the other day and I heard this lady over talking, uh, she was talking to somebody else, maybe her friend, she was saying that her back was in a lot of pain. She said, man, my back is really killing me and that's why I'm not doing all this stuff. And I, I got up and I took my card out of my wallet and I, I walked over and I said, hey, I noticed that you're, it looked like you're, back, you're in some back pain and I, I, I take pain away, that's what I do. So if you'd like some help, give me a call. And she said, nope, I'm fine. And she shrugged and turned away and she limped away really. And. Uh, it made me think, you know what fine stands for? Freaked out, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. And that's what coping with excessive anxiety, worry, and fear does. It makes you fine, right? Don't be like that. So uh, thanks for watching. And right now, what I want you to do is leave a comment for me below and like this video. Either way, I'll see you next time. Thanks again for watching.